Okay, we're going to talk now about geometric sequences. As in arithmetic sequences, the domain is also in the set of natural numbers. An example could be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. As you can see, um, the uh, numbers rise according to a common multiple. Like, for example, in this particular sequence, each number is 2 times the previous number. So if you multiply by 2 again, you get 16. You multiply by 2 again, you get 32. You multiply by 2 again, you get 64, and you keep going. So successive terms, then, take the previous term and multiply by what we call a common ratio. In this case, the number 2. In general terms, if the first term is A, just like it was for the last, uh, the last uh, sequence, the arithmetic sequence, then the next term is a times the number, right? So as in 2, and then this must be 2 times 2, and this must be 2 times 2 squared, 2 times 4. And this is 2 times 2 cubed, or 2 times 8. So that's, that's kind of what you're doing here. So r is just the common ratio, and every time a r gets multiplied by r to make r squared, a r squared gets multiplied by r to make r cubed, and a r cubed gets multiplied by r to make r fourth. That's how you reason out a common ratio here. So the general term then, instead of being that other one where you have, you know, uh, a uh, plus quantity d t or sorry d times quantity n minus one, you actually don't have that here. You have a your first term multiplied by your common ratio. Uh, to the power of n minus 1, where n is really the term, the nth term. Does that work? Well, for the first term, we have 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is really a times r to the 0, which is just a, because r anything to, the, anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So this is just a. So here's a times r to the 1, because this is the second term, and so we have r to the 1. This is the third term, and so we have a times r to the 2, and we keep going, okay? So here, where we have a times r to the n minus 1, this must be the nth term. Uh, we also use the nth term as the formula for the general term. So let's try and see if we can suss out these three questions. Find the first five terms of this one, which is explicitly written out for the first three terms. Or number 2, t1 equals 5 and t10 equals 2560. Or exercise 3, where t4 is negative 7 and t7 is 1 over 49. Let's see if we can do these three problems. So given this first question, we have a 1. We have a 1 third and a 1 9. It's like saying 1 over 3 to the 0, because 3 to the 0 is 1, and you get 1 back. This is 1 over... 3 to the 1, which is just 1 third, and we have 1 over 9, which is the same as 1 over 3 squared, and we keep going. We could call this 3 to the 0, well, yeah, because the negative of 0 is still 0. This is going to be 3 to the minus 1, and this is going to be 3 to the minus 2. So, to fill in the last two terms, we must have 3 to the minus 3 and 3 to the minus 4. I believe this is 1 over 27 and the other one is 1 over 81. So let's see that if we can make something of this general formula, remember the formula for the general term, uh, as a way of generating the other two terms as an alternative. Remember we said that this was 3 to the negative 3, which was 1 over 27, and 3 to the negative 4, which ended up being 1 over 81. Let's see if we can come up with those answers through this route. So we have, let's take a look at the second term. We said that t2 is 3 to the 1. Oh, well, it's not really 3 to the 1, 3 to the minus 1, right? And what's the first term? Because we need, an, we need a first term in the formula. So the first term was 1, right? It was 1. So we need a first term. But then, you know, the 1 doesn't really matter because when you multiply by 1, you just get, 
whatever the number you're multiplying by is. So this ends up being nothing more than 3 to the minus 1. Okay? Um, and so, okay, so that's T2, T3. Um, you, you can see this is not a big deal. 1 multiplied by 3 to the minus 2. So this is really just Tn is just 3 to the minus n minus 1, the negative of whatever n minus 1 is. That's really the general formula. Could we come up with now these two terms? Well, T4, T4, because we need that up here, these are the first three, so T4 is 3 to the negative What's n, what's n minus 1? That's 4 minus 1, which is 3. We have 3 to the negative 3. That's equals to 1 over 27, which is this. T5 is 3 to the, okay, 3 to the, let's see, 5 minus 1 is 4, negative 4. 3 to the negative 4, 3 to the 4 is 81. So to the negative 4 is just 1 over 81. And that's what this is. Okay, so the next question, T1 equals 5, T10 equals 2560. Remember that the nth term is A times R to the power of N minus 1. So we're saying that T1 is equal to 5, which is A well, it's just A, right? Uh, that's automatically A because it's understood A is always T1. So that's not too bad. Well, at least we know what A is. What about T10? Well, T10 is 2560. Well, that's equal to 5 times R to the power 9. Okay, so now you take your calculator, as I was saying, and now we got to divide both sides by 5. Really, r to the 9 is really 2560 divided by 5. Let's see if that does anything. 2560 divided by 5 is 512. I think I know the answer right away, but I think most of you won't see that the answer is 2. But let's see we can use our calculator to figure that out. Really, what we want is r equals the ninth root of 512. So what's that? We could use our calculator in many ways for this, for, for uh, roots that have some weird power on them. Uh, we can do this, 512 raised to the power of 1 over 9. So 1 divided by 9 in the exponent, and I do get two as the answer. And so the general term is um, five times two to the n minus one. There we go. So that means that uh, for the first five terms we know that t1 is five. Here I'll, I'll use a different color pen I guess. We know that t1 is five and then the next term must be 5 times 2. And the next term must be 5 times 4. Oh, not 4. 5 times 4 is 20. And the next term must be 5 times 2 cubed. So that's 5 times 8, which is 40. And then the next one, notice that every successive, um, every successive member is just multiplied by 2. And so the next one must be 80. Does that check out? That's 5 times 16. 5 times 2 to the power 4, and it turns out to be 80. Okay? So there are the first five terms of that sequence. Okay, so here's the last question for the geometric series, the last example. T of 4 is negative 7. T of 7 is... T7 is 1 over 49. So using this, figure out the first five terms. First of all, we need to make our formula. Okay, so we have two numbers here, two terms. T4 is negative 7. T7 is 1 over 49. 
There's either two possibilities here, because you notice that there's a sign change. The T4 is um, T4 is negative and T7 is positive. So which which of A or R happen to be the negative one? If A was negative, then you would expect all of the R's all of the terms to be negative because then R, a positive R raised to an exponent, should never change sign. Like R squared, R cubed, if you, if you think of a base that is greater than zero, a base that is positive, like two or something, two squared, two cubed, two to the fourth, two to the four hundredth, whatever, you'll never be able to change the sign on two if two is the base. But if any positive number happens to be the base, the exponent will never change the sign. However, if the base is already negative, let's say we have negative 2 and it's raised to the power of 1, we're going to get negative 2. If negative 2 is raised to the power of 2, that's negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. So there is a sign change, right? So in, in other words, it requires R to be the negative base and A to be positive. Our TN is, well, how about if we just use, we know what TN is in the general case. Let's look at T4. So T4 is minus 7, which is like A R to the 3, A R cubed. T7 is going to be, we, we were told, 1 over 49. Now, 1 over 49 is 1 over 7 squared, which is like 7 to the minus 2, okay? So we're, we're going to say that that's 7 to the minus 2. It's positive. There's no minus sign in front, just a minus sign in the exponent, which still means it's positive, because you can see clearly 1 over 49 is positive. And this becomes a r to the 6th. We are using the idea that A must be positive, but R and R must be negative. Okay, we're using that idea um, in, our, in our search for A and R. Now, unlike uh, arithmetic sequences where we would subtract one from the other, we have a little problem here in that the terms are multiplied by each other and we have different powers on one of the variables. So what happens is that we need to now divide T, T4 into T7. So we have T7 divided by T4, which is equal to AR cubed divided by AR to the six. It's like saying, or sorry, A, AR to the six divided by AR cubed, going the other way. So it's like saying that it's seven to the minus two divided by seven, which is like a r to the sixth divided by a r cubed. Okay, so now, unlike arithmetic sequences, you divide to find your terms in the geometric sequence. You can see right away that the a's cancel because they're both to the power one. And using the laws of exponents, we, we just get r to the sixth minus three, which is r cubed. What about this side? So we have really, 7 to the minus 2, and this is 7 to the 1, so we're subtracting 1, which is 7 to the minus 3, which is equal to r cubed. Okay? Now, what we can do now is take the square, uh, sorry, not the square root of both sides, but the cube root of both sides, and so that r equals 7 to the minus 1. But there's a little problem here, Houston. We didn't want 7 to the minus 1. It's actually negative 7 because we required r to be we required r to be negative because of this phenomenon of going from negative to positive. Okay? So we need r to be negative. And that means that this whole thing, this whole base is to the power of the exponent. So here we got really negative 2 squared and is it equal to and we don't know if it's equal to negative 2 squared done in this manner. This is going to be negative 2 multiplied by negative 2. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. But is this going to be positive 4? Well, 2 squared is 4, but then there's this equal sign. It's actually minus 4. It turns out 
these are not equal. So make sure that when you express a negative base, if the base is negative, it has to be, just to make absolutely sure that you're communicating this, put it in brackets, and that way you won't get into trouble. Well, in this case, this is going to be negative 1 over 7. Okay, this is, this is what r is. r is negative 1 over 7, or negative 7 to the negative 1, if you like. Probably easier to think about if you did it this way. So, using this general term, uh, oh yeah, one other thing, we don't know what a is. Let's find out what a is. So t4 equals negative 7 equals a times negative 1 over 7 cubed, which is really just negative 1 over 7 cubed or negative 7 to the negative 3. You can put it that way. And that way, notice that we can just divide both sides by um, the numbers we know. And so a becomes negative 7 over negative 7 to the negative cubed. So what's that? Well, this is negative 7 to the 1 minus negative 3. So that's plus 3. Sorry, minus 7 to the 1 plus 3. That is right. So negative 7 to the power 4. Well, really, that's just 7 to the power 4. And so, well, we might as well take away the minus sign because this is going to end up being positive anyway. So these are equal to each other. Okay. So then, we to, to put things in, let's just erase... Well, I don't know what to erase here because I'm going to use a different color pen because I use too much blue. So let's use green. So our nth term then, our nth term is equal to, we said 7 to the 4 times uh, what's, what's r? Negative 1 over 7 to the n minus 1. Okay, let's see how that works. So t1 is 7 to the 4. This is going to, oh, hold on. You know what? This can be simplified before we figure out our five terms. This can be simplified because we can rewrite this as 7 to the 4 multiplied by negative 7 to the power of negative n minus 1, so negative, negative of n minus 1, or negative n plus 1, which is like 1 minus n. Uh, notice we have a what could arguably thought of as a common base, but we don't exactly have that, um, because this one's special, we need to keep that negative. So, uh, in case, because this one will change sign. And so uh, we have, so for t1, we have 7 to the 4 well this is your first term anyway so notice this works out to 0 so we end up with just 7 to the 4. T2 is 7 to the 4 times negative 7 times 2 1 minus 2 is negative 1 so we get 7 to the 4 times, you know what, how about if I work across and just get rid of all this. So 7 to the 4 times negative 7 to the minus 1, we got 7 to the 4 over negative, just negative 7, because that's all that is when you raise it to the minus 1. Um, and so we got really, this all works out to being negative, so negative 7 to the 4 minus 1, negative 7 cubed. That's T2.